Okay, this is standard 4.6. Um, in this one, we're going to be talking about sexual reproduction and the way that um, sexual reproduction um, cells are made. Um, those are our gametes, um, and this happens in the sexual reproductive system of humans. So we're going to be able to understand that sexual reproduction requires gametes from two parents. Remember, gametes are your sex cells. We're going to recognize that the female gametes, eggs, are formed in the ovaries, and the sperm from males are formed in the testicles. Okay, and we're going to recognize that offspring are going to get half of their DNA from each parent, and that prevents them from being identical to either parent. So that's related to what we have recently talked about. Okay, so here's some of the words that we're going to see within here. Um, and we're going to go through basically the main process that happens during each um, or in each individual male or female. So remember in sexual reproduction we are going to be combining the genetic information from two different parents. We're going to take DNA from a male and DNA from a female and put them together. Okay, and um, the way that happens is that the gametes, the egg and sperm, are going to fuse their nuclei. So remember when you have your egg plus the sperm it's going to come along and it's going to fertilize that egg and what you get out of that is the zygote and the zygote is the fertilized egg and that zygote then will undergo many rounds of mitosis to become the new multicellular organism that would be formed from this joining of sperm and egg so the gonads are the reproductive organs where gametes are going to be made um, so we know that meiosis is the process by which gametes get made. So the gonads are where meiosis is going to occur. Um, the female gonads are the ovaries, and the male gonads are the testes. Um, and so meiosis is going to happen in the ovaries in females and in the testes in males. So we're going to start by talking about the ovaries. These are your female reproductive organs. There are two ovaries, um, and they are controlled from are controlled by hormones that are released from the pituitary gland. If you remember, the pituitary gland is in your brain, um, and that is going to help to control the release of estrogen and progesterone. Estrogen and progesterone will then tell the ovaries to do meiosis, um, and by doing meiosis, they will then make the eggs. So remember, the eggs are being made by the females, and that's going to happen in the ovaries. So if you look over here, we have the uterus of the female, um, and the ovaries are connected to the uterus, and so as an egg gets released, it would move down the fallopian tubes and then into the uterus. If fertilization of that egg were to happen, it would happen somewhere up in the fallopian tubes, um, and then the egg would move down and plant itself in the uterus for um, pregnancy. The formation of eggs is a little bit different than the formation of sperm, um, and it's a kind of a variation on meiosis. So um, first of all, all of the meiosis that's going to happen in a female actually happens before birth. So you are born with all of the eggs that you're ever going to have if you're a female. So you have all the eggs that you're going to have at the time of your birth. Those eggs, however, are not fully formed yet. Um, they're in the process of being formed. Um, at the end of meiosis in a female, we get our four haploid cells, because that's what we get out of meiosis, um, but only one of them is going to become the egg. The other three are things called polar bodies, and they are just little remnants. They All they basically have inside of them is the DNA, but they don't have any cell parts or anything like that, so they can't develop into full eggs, um, and those end up getting recycled by the body and it's only the one egg that gets made that is the one that could possibly be fertilized. Reason for that is we need all the major cell parts and everything to go into this one egg. Remember the egg is what is going to be doing all the dividing um, and doing all the work to make the new multicellular organism. So it needs to have a lot going on with it. So most of the stuff from the original cell is going to end up in only one of the cells and all the other um, DNA that was processed during this it just ends up in these little things called polar bodies and those get recycled by the body. So at the end of meiosis in a female only one of the cells is the egg. The other three um, are not going to get used. Okay, That is different than in males. So in males the reproductive organs are called the testes. 
Um, they are also controlled by hormones from the pituitary gland and up in the brain. The main hormone that is controlling the process of meiosis in the testes is testosterone. Okay, and so we're going to have our whole process of meiosis happening in the testes again. There are two testes. Um, two testes, they're going to make their sperm, and the sperm would then travel down and out of the penis when ejaculation happens in the hope of finding an egg. Sperm production is different in um, males. Males will start to undergo meiosis from the time that they start puberty until death. So males are able to make sperm for their entire lifespan. Women can only make eggs from the time that they start puberty um, until they go through menopause, which is usually somewhere in the 50s, 40s to 50s. Now the other difference is with sperm, all four of the haploid cells that are going to be made by meiosis are going to become sperm. So in a um, female, only one of the four becomes the egg. Here, all four of them are going to become sperm. Um, and males are capable of making millions of sperm each day. So you start out with your original cell, go through the process of meiosis, and you end up with four individual sperm cells. Now remember, those sperm cells are much smaller than the egg because all they're going to be contributing to the egg is their DNA. The egg has to be a lot bigger because it's also contributing all of the different cell parts that are going to be needed to sustain the new organism. So the result of sexual reproduction doing all of this, offspring that are formed, remember, are a combination of their two parents. So because of that, our offspring are never identical to one parent. You might look a lot more like one parent or the other, but you're not identical to either parent. Um, and that's because the DNA that you're getting from each parent is different, and then you end up being a mix of those two sets of DNA. This is going to allow for greater genetic variation within the organisms of a species. Um, and that's going to be a really good thing. So if something were to happen, um, if there's a lot of genetic variation, some might survive and some might not. But that is good for the entire species because if you have some that can survive a major change in the environment, then the species will continue. If everybody was exactly the same, then you're going to have major problems because if nobody could survive it, then that entire species could die out.